Welcome back to Grief Inspired. Today we are asking the question, can you be happy after loss? My name is Katherine McNulty and like I said, this is Grief Inspired. If you like this channel, please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon to be notified of all the new videos that I release. I do release two new videos every week, usually on Wednesdays and Sundays. Like I said, today we are talking about, can you be happy after loss? The answer is yes. And this question came up because I was talking to a therapist and I was explaining to her, you know, how I look at grief and how I look at overcoming grief and getting unstuck. And, and she asked me, she said, well, for people who are early in grief, you know, you seem to be so positive and so hopeful. And she says, how does that resonate with people who are really, really hurting? And is that something that they, like that it's too much, too much for them? And I thought about it for a while and I took some time and I said, okay, this is like a really good question and I need to think about this. And I decided that the answer is no, because I think back on my own grief journey and right after my loss, I didn't know what to do. I came home. I had been away for six weeks. My son had been in the NICU. I had been living across the street from the hospital for those six weeks. So I had basically stepped out of my entire life. And when I came home, I came home to an empty nursery. I came home without my son. And I looked around the life that I had, the life before all of this, and I was kind of looking forward to the life that I had wanted and no longer had. And for me, there was a dramatic moment because I realized in that moment, that was really when I cracked open. And there's this beautiful quote from Rumi that says, the wound is the place where the light enters. That was the moment when I really cracked open because I had come back to my life and suddenly the house that I invested so much money and energy and worry and concern into no longer mattered. The career that I fretted about every day and was worried about being competitive on the sales team and doing well and, and making money suddenly didn't matter anymore. It didn't matter anymore how much money I had in the bank and we were doing well. None of that mattered and I would have given up everything that I thought was really important to me. You know, this, this concept of the American dream and that you have to have, you know, the big fancy house and the white picket fence and I had a dog and the whole thing. Right? I did what I thought I was supposed to do. And after my loss, when I was cracked open, it no longer seemed that important. And I remember thinking to myself, I would gladly give this all up if I could just have another moment with my son. And I reached out at that point to ask for help. And I didn't know where to go. And I found a, somehow, I found a support group for mothers who had lost children. And so I went to this meeting, hopeful, saying, okay, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what's gonna happen here. It was very frightening. But I said, I need to do something. And I sat in the meeting and the woman that I was looking up to the one that I, I really just wanted hope. I wanted somebody to tell me that this wasn't the end of my happiness. That yes, I was gonna go on living, but not in a meaningful way because I felt like my happiness had been stripped from me. What I wanted had been taken. What I expected had been taken. I had been betrayed. And I sat in the meeting and the woman that was facilitating the meeting, 
she had brought in a birthday cake that day. A birthday cake to commemorate the loss of her son five years before. I didn't know what was happening. I sat in a circle. There were probably 10 other women, which also blew me away to think that there were 10 women in my town who had lost an infant because I didn't know that this happened. And she lit the candle on the cake and it was just silence. No one sang, no one the way a birthday should be. And she sobbed. And she sobbed as her other daughter was there who was clearly older than the son that had died five years before. So she was maybe seven. And this woman was sobbing. The facilitator, the person that I was looking to for hope was sobbing over her own loss. And something happened inside of me. This internal wound that had cracked me open, something happened in there. And maybe it was light letting in, maybe it was an internal fire. I don't know what it was, but something happened in my mind and I said, no. I said, I am not gonna be this woman five years from now. I am not gonna be standing over a birthday cake that my little boy is never gonna eat sobbing in my loss. And I didn't know it, but that was the moment when I decided that I was gonna figure this grief thing out. I didn't have the support I needed, but I knew I wanted to not feel terrible. So I wasn't necessarily looking for happiness, true happiness, the happiness that I feel now the purpose and the meaning that I have for my life and the way things have changed in a monumental way for me. I wasn't looking for any of that. I just didn't want to feel terrible and so sad and so depressed and I had no energy and people didn't want to be around me. And I would get up every morning because I was in sales. And in sales, you're bubbly and happy and you're da, da, da. That's what they teach you. And so I would try to put on my happy face every day and come home devastated. Devastated. And so I wanted hope. I wanted hope that I was going to be okay. I wanted hope that I would at least feel as good as I did before my loss. And in retrospect, it's so, I'm so much happier now than before all of this happened because I personally had work to do on myself and my life because I had been going after what I thought was gonna make me happy. I was going after the shoulds you should have this career. You should work for this company. You should have this kind of a house. You should, you should, you should. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about with the shoulds. And so I wanted hope. I wanted hope and it took me quite a while, but I finally was forced when I was cracked open further because I managed to make it through another pregnancy, even though I was hospitalized for the whole time and every day was, is he gonna live? Is he gonna die? But Mason is a beautiful eight-year-old boy. But when he got to be six weeks old, the same age that my son Jackson was on the day that he died, I had to go back to work and I had to leave my son, Mason. And I didn't know how to do that. And the thought of doing that invoked so much panic within me that it was disabling. 
And so I was cracked open so wide and so deep that I had to keep looking for help. And I, that is such a gift that I, that I looked for help and that I found someone that transformed my life. And she may not even have known she still probably doesn't even really, really understand the magnitude that the way she impacted me. But when I got through the bulk of my grief, like the big stuff, I realized that there was a message and the message was a message of hope. And I thought back to, man, I wish somebody had told me that I could get here where I was. And this was two years after my loss, two to three. I wish I had known that this was the, that there was a path, that there was something I could have done because it would have been much easier on me. It would have been much less of the struggle, the day in day out struggle that grief was for me. And I felt so strongly about it that I started making these YouTube videos because I said, this is like an outrage that no, the world doesn't tell you that you can get through this. And the world tells you to be quiet and go into your, go into your house and come out when you're better. And don't let that grief stuff get on me because I don't want to be feeling that. As if you're sick, as if you're contagious. And there's just such an important message there. And so is there hope? Can you be happy again? The answer is a resounding yes. I am living proof. And I know so many members in the grief community who have done the work and learned how to resolve their grief. And what's happened is these people that I've brought into my life and who I've gotten to meet are a whole nother level of quality people. And so everything about my life has changed. And I did it one step at a time because I stopped looking at the shoulds and say, well, if I don't have to follow that should, what else would I choose? What else would I choose? And sometimes you don't know what to choose. And you're like, well, I don't know because this is all I know. I've spoken with husbands who have lost their wives who say, I don't know how to make a decision without her. And I get that and it's scary. And so the process to healing from grief is saying, okay, well, given that, if you did have to make a choice, because this is where you are now, what would you choose? What are the things that make you happy? What are the things you value in your life? What are the things that make your life have meaning? And have you asked yourself the question, why am I on this planet? Why do I get up in the morning? Because I guarantee you it can't be to be part of the rat race that we all can get wrapped up in. And so for me, can you be happy again after loss? Yes. Am I happier now than I thought was ever possible? Yes. And I didn't know but I figured it out. And so what's the path? The path is what I call grief inspired. And it has three pillars that I talk about all of the time. The three pillars are one, you gotta understand what grief is and how it's affecting you. And the majority of my grief courses, that's what they are. My grief journal helps you with that too. What is this grief thing? Because the world doesn't talk about it not in the way that they should. The world doesn't expect it. We're not prepared for it. We don't collectively mourn as a society. 
We don't talk about our loss. So you need to understand your grief and you need to understand how is this affecting you? And that's going to relate to, well, who did you lose? Who did you lose and how close was that person to you? And what was that relationship life like? And how do the nuances of that relationship? A lot of people say, well, my relationship with my mother was complicated. My relationship with my sister was complicated. And that can add to the grief. So it's learning those kind of things about your grief. And then it's saying, given the situation that you are in now, with the amount of this change, and we've talked before about the wall of grief coming down and having to pivot away and move in a different direction that you didn't want to go in. Well, given that, what do you want to try? Who are you as a person? What do you value? Because now you've been cracked open and your belief system has changed. We talked about that in what is post-traumatic growth right? Your belief system, fundamentally, you've been cracked open. And so what does that mean for you? And is your life congruent with who you really are? Not with the who you should be, not with the character that you've built to try to show this perfection to the world, to do the best, be the best, control everything. But it's who are you at your core, in your heart? Why are you hurting so much? What was it that you loved so much about the person? What are the things you wish you had done? What are the things that you used to love that you gave up to follow the shoulds? What are the things that you haven't tried yet because you didn't make the time? And so it's looking for that light and leaning into the light and saying, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. And I introduce people to different thought, thought leaders, different motivational speakers, people who, you know, question the societal normalcy. And so you listen to them and then you start to say, you know what? I like that person. I like what that person has to say that resonates with me and you shift in that direction and then you start to say well the relationships around me are these the relationships that i should have are these relationships that are that are giving to me and relationships that i can give to them or are the relationships not so perfect not untoxic right are the relationships toxic and are you keeping them because you should and there's this beautiful saying that sometimes you need to let things go to make room for new, right? So who is it in your life that you need to let go or put some distance with if they're closer family that you don't want to like, you know, oust them from your life completely. But how can you, how can you spend a little less time because that's good for you? And then who can you find to bring into your life who is more aligned with who you want to be and what's important to you, who makes you feel lighter, who makes you feel better about yourself? Who are the people that don't judge you, criticize you, tell you you should be doing more, better, faster, all of it? Who are the people who are there to support you? Right. So those things change. And then you go to your career and you say, am I doing, you know, the work that I want to do? Is my work fulfilling? Is it providing me what I need? No matter what the income level is, is this what I need? Is this what I want? And it's opening up and starting to say, well, if I could have anything in my life, because I've now learned the fragility of life, what would I want? And what would be the perfect day? And that might be too soon for you to figure out today, depending on where you are on your grief journey. But that's the path. And then slowly over time, when I talk about 
the tag, my, you know, my tagline is I bring light to the darkness of grief. It's about knowing that there is hope and being hopeful and moving toward the light. And everyone's light is a little bit different. And do you hear those birds? Do you hear? I hope you can hear them. It has rained here last night and it's springtime and it's miraculous because plants were dead and they're coming back to life and there's this renewing that happens as part of the grief process if you let it. And there's another quote and I'm probably not going to get it exactly right, but it says if we seek for answers, we will find them. So the grief journey is about looking for the answers to all of those questions that come up. And it's just saying like, what are the questions first of all? And then how do I answer them? And sometimes that takes some exploration and that's what we do in our courses. And we say, why, why is the guilt gripping me so tightly? Why do I have anger that I can't let go? Now that I've processed this loss in a good way, in a healthy, meaningful way, what's next for me? Where do I go from here? And how do I keep living in a way that honors the person that I've lost because I know they wouldn't want me to be miserable forever? And so what does that look like? And so the question is, can you be happy after loss? And the answer is yes, because the opposite of hope is despair. And despair is literally defined as an unwillingness to hope. So if you are sitting there and you're thinking my life is over, I am going to be miserable and unhappy because I am never gonna be okay without this person in my life. That is the unwillingness to hope. And that is a place that I don't want you to be in. So even if you can't see the light right now, I want to be that hope for you. I want to bring light to the darkness of grief. And it's so important to me. Let me bring hope, says the St. Francis prayer. St. Francis of Assisi. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is sorrow, let me sow joy. So yes, can you be happy again after loss? Absolutely, absolutely. Does it require work? Yes. Should you do it alone? I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. Should you get help and ask for help and follow someone, doesn't have to be me, but follow someone who is where you want to be who's already walked their own path. And it won't be the same path as yours, but at least if they've gotten along the path and they've ended up, are they somebody that makes you feel inspired and happy? And you say to yourself, wow, that person has something that I also would like to have. That's what you deserve. You deserve hope. You deserve lightness in the darkness of your grief. You deserve to find the new path that you didn't want to go on. And that's what I do. And I want to walk that path with you. And if I can help you along that path, well then that gives me meaning and purpose for my life. This is what I chose. Grief Inspired is my path, my journey my way of honoring the six weeks that I had with the most amazing, wonderful little human. 
and I get to share him with the world. And he has helped me and guided me, if you believe that, to become who I was supposed to be. When you, when you give up the shoulds, you realize that you can become something that you're supposed to be. Just being who you are and not being perfect and not striving for perfection, but just being like, this is who you are and letting your heart swell in a way that fills with kindness and hope and joy. And to know that you can impact someone else in the world. And it can be through the little things. It can be being nice to somebody in an elevator. It can be helping someone with a grocery cart. It can be really small things. But when you're on your path, you'll find what you were supposed to do. Were you supposed to teach people art? Were you supposed to help people get exercise or exercise, more exercise than they do? Are you supposed to share your messages in a book, in a blog, in a Facebook post? Who are you supposed to be and what is your life? Because if you pay attention, your life will tell you that the universe, God, spirit, will, will push you in directions if you just follow the clues and the cues. And when opportunities present themselves, you take a chance. And you say, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but I'm gonna try it out. And then you go, wow, I really enjoyed that. I'm gonna do that again. That's what I want for you. That's what the path to being grief inspired is. That's what the journey is. Can you be happy again after loss? A resounding yes. So hold on to that hope for now. Even if you don't believe it in your heart. Even if you're like intellectually that's. I can buy into that. I like that idea. But if you don't have it in your heart right now. And you, it's too much to believe. That's okay. Hang on to it. Because. There are people in the world like me and all the people who help those who grieve, who want to make a difference for you, who want to help, who want you to be happy, who want you to become who you're supposed to be. So just hang on for now. And when you're ready for my help, reach out and we'll figure out a way, we'll figure out a path forward for you specifically. And it might be in a group, it might be one-on-one, -on -one. It might be with just, you know, me creating a video for you like this. There's lots of choices and we can create them together. And so grief inspired is the fundamental shift from just surviving the day to creating something new and different and unexpected that wows you, that honors the person that you're missing. And it's taking the love that you have for them and channeling it in to saving your own life and giving your own life meaning. Because the more meaning that your life has, the more meaning that their life had for you. And so that's today's message. Reach out to me at griefinspired at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Please help me so that I can do more, so that I can help more people, so that my, my reach is broader, so that more people will find me, and so that we can keep this message going because it's an important message. And given this state of the world, this is a message that we all need. So share this video out with a friend if it's helped you, if it's brought you hope. Share out the other videos that you found particularly useful for you. And then let me know so that I can keep creating, so that I can keep doing things that's going to help you bring light to the darkness of your grief. Bye for now.